What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POB. Shout out to the joiners. Shout out to the Point of View crew. And today, we're going to talk about when PCs ride. And the room got quiet. You can hear some crickets and people are like, wait a minute, PCs ride? Isn't that dudes in protective custody on sensitive knee jars so they're protected and they're sensitive? What are they riding over? What do they got to ride about? You'd be surprised. When I first started doing time, 80% of the dudes on that PC yards were dudes with funny style paperwork. They were victims. They were targets. They were just pusses, homeboy. Just trash. They're nothing. But since then, and nowadays, you have all kinds of gang dropouts. So I would say nowadays on the PC yards, 75% of them dudes are gang dropouts. Dudes that didn't pay their dope debts. Dudes got caught with kites. They got caught with filettos. So it's a whole different breed in there. Do they ride? Some of them do. Let's get into it. Okay, now track with me. Trip on how all this unfolded. I'm doing a term. I go to Soledad. An issue happens between the woods and the North Daniels. I end up slammed in the cell. Ten months. Get out of the cell. They open the doors. I get a little bit of yard. Just enough to get in trouble. And that's real talk. A little tiny bit of yard. And then CDCR decides to send me to Arizona. I get a ducket. They come and snatch me up on my way to Arizona. On the way there, though, we do a little layover at Wasco. We're there for three weeks. Slammed in the cell. Nothing coming. Just like a solid ad. Ten months in the cell. A little bit of yard. Now, boom. Stuck in the cell again at Wasco reception. Three weeks. Not reception, my bad. Wasco. Then they finally take us to Arizona. Excited to finally get somewhere, get some yards, and damn, get our property. They throw us in the cells. A week, two weeks goes by. We're like, what is going on? Can we get our property? Can we get some yard? Where's the program? What are we doing? Why are we still stuck in the cell? They said, well, look, our bad. You guys are at Florence. This is a PC pin. You're supposed to be Eloy. But all the buildings at Eloy are occupied. So you have to stay right here where you're at. Slammed in the cell until building is ready for you, Eloy. This is a PC pin. You can't program here. Snarf, snarf. Stuck in the cell a few more weeks longer. So, stuck in the cell. They're feeding us in the cell. But soon, after a couple, two, three, four weeks, whatever, they say to us, hey, we're going to let you guys come get your trays. We're not going to feed you in the cell. We're going to open up the cell doors, and you can come down, come and get your trays, because they're going to make the trays in the cell port. And then take your food back to your cell. That was kind of cool. It was just a little tiny bit of a blessing, homeboy, but better than a sharp stick in the eye. At least you got to like stretch your legs and get out there and see the homeboys and shake some hands and just be like, oh, damn, shit. And just walk out there and see something else other than your cell and get your tray. Then even better than that, they start picking some of us inmates to actually make the trays. Out of straight up laziness on their part, I'd assume. They didn't ask for volunteers, they just picked us a doorward crack, and they said, hey, you and your cell, come out, make up some trays. So they take about four or five of us, open up the cell, let us out, go to the cell port, they got all the, the hot tray thing, all the food, all the trays, all the everything, and they're just back there with your ladles, making trays, and send them through the tray slot, boom, done. Then clean up, back to the cell. So that happened a few times. I'm out there. I'd already done it a few times, I meant to say. I'd never taken any carts back. They'd have us make the trays, clean up, back to the cell. Out there. Making trays, clean up. This lady says to me, hey, grab a cart. We're going to push it back. We're going to take these carts back to the kitchen. I was like, all right, cool. Again, I'm thinking, awesome, man. Stretch my legs. Get to see a little bit more of the prison. A little, you know, out of the cell. A little bit longer. Just like uh, get to move around, like this is cool, this is awesome. I was not thinking to myself, wait a minute, this is a PC pin. Be on guard, be on point, be looking around. As far as I know, we're the only GPs there. That's what they're treating us like they are, just have this little corner, like shut away. You guys gotta go to Eloy and tell the end, honey, hush. Just kick it. But now, I wasn't thinking like that, I didn't think cool, I get to go to the kitchen. Alright, man, I even seen some mates and shit. Hey, what's up, guys? You know, go over to the kitchen area. The lady who I'm with, who said, hey, grab a cart. She grabbed a big cart. I grabbed a cart. We each pushed something over there. When we get to the kitchen area, door opens. She takes both carts inside, tell me to wait. 
I got the impression maybe inmates couldn't go back there. That's where they count the ladles and the knives. Everything's locked up. They put away. You know, no inmates beyond this line. You know, take the cards. Boom. She went in there and I'm standing out like this. Waiting for her to come back out. Take me back to where it was at. While I'm waiting, I see a, a cop come walking up with two dudes. Doing the same thing I just did. Pushing carts. They came up. The cop that was with them did the same thing the cop that was with me did. Grabbed some of those carts and put them inside. And now it's us three just standing there. Dude! I'm straight slipping. I wasn't even thinking. You did the PCs? Or who are they? Let's, I wasn't thinking nothing, bro. I guess I was just straight up in a fog, homeboy. Straight purple haze from too much cell time. I don't know what my problem is, dog. But I just stood there. Man, what's up? Finally, dude's like, hey, man. What section you live in? He kind of walked over close to me. And I was like, oh, I don't even know the name of it, man. It's over there somewhere. I, I haven't been that long. I haven't been here that long. I honestly don't even know the name. He goes, well, are you going to Eloy? And I was like, yeah, yeah, waiting for us to have a building. And I was telling him, waiting for us to have a building up in Eloy. And while I was talking, dude punched me in the mouth, dog. Couldn't believe it. I deserved it, though. I got caught slipping, dog. Punched me in the mouth. Other dude got up, jumped me. I'm fighting. I trip and fall down. He didn't knock me down. I tripped over my own feet. That'll become important later. Trip over my own damn feet, dog. Fall down. But I was impressed how fast I got up. As if I was made of some rubber dogs, I fell and boom, was instantly back up. I even remember thinking to myself, like, damn, Splinter, you go, homie. That was awesome. Bitch, can't do that again. So we're fighting, we're fighting, we're fighting. The chick who escorted me over there comes out. Now, she doesn't break out her mace. She, she didn't have no mace. She didn't break out no baton. She didn't have no baton. She didn't even push a bell. Bloop, 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 to call the cops. She's like, stop. Use her voice. You guys stop. Quit. One of the dudes... Of the two that was jumping, he's like, oh, stop. You want us to stop? Okay. Yeah, she went. Crawling out. Okay, stopping. Me and the other dudes kept biting. We're not stopping. It's based on your command. What? So she used her body to get in between us. Butt first. I'm like, got in between us. What can you do? And you're like, trying to hit the dude, like trying to get around her. So she used her body to separate us. It worked. More cops came. Snatched me up. Snatched them up. Didn't even handcuff me. I thought it was pretty crazy. Just took them away. I don't know if handcuffed them or not. I was kind of saying, whoa. It took me back to the cell. No write-up. No incident report. Just, we all had a theory. Homeboy. Tussle is conspiracy theory. They're like Splinter. The cops do that on purpose. They set you up. They had you get jumped. Probably they're tired of having us here. Having to care for us. Cell feed us. And just, dude, they had to put all kinds of extra care into us. They just couldn't open the doors and let us program. They had a babysitter's full blast. So they got sick of that homeboy. They had me get jumped, the conspiracy said. And it kind of makes sense because it's like three or four days later. Boom. We're on our way to Eloy. The craziest part about this story is I'm telling it to some homeboys at Eloy like about six months later. Some woods. We're all kicking back in the pinochle table. I'm telling them, yeah, did you guys hear about I got jumped by the PCs when I was at Florence? Like, no, no, so I'm telling it. And this one dude, I didn't even like this dude. You know, sometimes you meet somebody. Just, I did not like this dude. I didn't care for him at all. I'm telling the people the story, and he starts questioning everything I was saying. I cannot remember everything he was saying. I tried real hard to, but what I do remember is what caused us to get in the fight. He was questioning me, and finally, when I said how I tripped over my feet, he's like, well, you were backpedaling. I was like, what? He's like, the only way you trip over your feet is if you were, like, moving backwards and backpedaling. That would cause you to trip over your feet. I was like, I didn't backpedal. I wasn't backwards. There's a wall right there. I was having my back against the wall. I didn't know for me to go back. I didn't... Back pedal. I didn't know. Yeah, she's like, well, hey, homie, no, we got to trip over your feet. And like I said, by the time he said that to me, he'd already said some other shit. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, so the cop brought two inmates pushing carts. How come the cop just brought you, one inmate? And then that cop brought two. He's like, that don't really make sense, does it? I was like, dude, I'm not trying to make sense of it. I'm just telling you what happened. I think the thing that makes less sense is how I got jumped. Let's talk about that. He's like, focused like, on my details and shit, trying to get me caught up. Basically, called me a liar. So I just said, you know what? Suck a dick. Eat shit. Fuck you. Pick a cell. I'm tired of you, bro. Let's get it. And he was shocked. He's like, damn, like that, bro? I said, just like that. He's like, well, I didn't mean nothing. But I, you didn't mean anything by it? I took something by it. Because you call me a liar. Every time I say something, like, couldn't happen like that. He's like, well, I was just trying to... I, I know what you're trying to do. Call me a liar. Pick a cell, fool. I thought I could take him, dude. I thought I could take him real easy. He actually walked with a limp. I'm going to use that to my advantage, bro. But no, the limp, he used to his advantage. I do not have time right now to break down the science of it, but he was able to generate a lot of power with that limp, homeboy. Oh he, he had like a super, like like a limp punch. Can't get into it now, but uh, I felt it. Felt it. I felt the force of the, of the limp, homeboy. Oh so, I lost that fight. I don't give a rip. 
Anyway, be it as it may, dog. Two more stories. I got a county jail story and a street story. Let's go street story. I got these two homegirls. They live together. Good friends of mine. I won't buy their pad. What's that, homegirls? They're like Splinter. This dude has been coming over here he, he, all night, all morning, starting trouble with us. I'm like, what? Some dude, who is it? I'm going to smash him. They're like, I don't know. He, we met him once or twice before. We know his old lady. He thinks his old lady's here. We even opened up the door and let him come into the house to assure him she's not here. And as soon as he went through it, we gave him that courtesy. He goes outside. He's like, no, no, she's still there. She's there. Let me in. Let me look again. And they're like, no, dude, kick rocks. Get out of here. He's coming by, driving by, yelling stuff, just, just being a straight up nuisance, bro. I'm like, if I see him, I'm going to beat that fool's ass, man. So we're talking. I was there like 20 minutes. They're like, he's here. He's here. They said, he's back. And he's in the front yard. So I go over to the window to look out, just check this dude out. Then I'm going to go out front. I'm going to smash him. I'm going to see where he's at. And I'm going to go out the front door. I'm going to rush, homeboy. And I look at him. And look, I don't get intimidated, dude. Usually. And if I get intimidated, I don't get intimidated by appearance. But homeboy, his appearance intimidated the shit out of me, dog. He had what I can only describe for back, lack a better word is freckles. But no, wait a minute now. They can't be freckles because freckles are what like a redhead person would have. It's like a sneeze, a little dot right across the nose. It's like freckles. He had birthmark dots on his face. Freckles? I don't know, bro. I hate calling them freckles, but what else could it be, homeboy? It was war paint given to him by God himself. It covered his whole face. It was the size of a... The dots were the size of an eraser, bro. Don't ask me why I have a pencil just laying around. And they're everywhere. And he had the nerve to shave his head. To show off the dots on his head, too. As if the ones on his face weren't intimidating enough. Just a scary, creepy dude, bro. And he knew it. And he, 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 he took it for all it was worth. And he even shaped his face and held his face in such a position. Such a mean mug. To really capitalize on those dots. Those uh, freckles, if you will. And I seen him. I'm like, damn, who's this cat? What in the fizz that guy's like, hey, uh... He's probably just like worried about his old lady. Like he's not, I wouldn't trip on him. He's like, I fuck it, let him in again. If she's not here, he's not here. Maybe just let him look around and then I will go. I'm like, what? And as a matter of fact, I was like, I don't even think he's in your yard. If you look close, he's kind of by the sidewalk. That could be county property. Just because of sidewalk. You don't know, you don't own the street or the sidewalk. So he might not even be in your yard. He, he's all right. I hurt no one. They're like, damn, I just wonder what? And I was like, all right. I'm just going to have to smash it, dude. I can't buck this call out any longer. I keep making excuses not to handle it, and it's going to make me look like a puss. And I'm um, sure not feeling like a puss, but I'm feeling intimidated. It's still a creepy as hell, dog. I don't want to confront him about nothing. I want to help me push a dress against the door. And yell at the window. She's not here. She's down the street five miles away. Finally, I said, all right, man, whatever. I'm, I said, I'm going to confront him. And so I opened the door. I walked from the window and opened the door. It will creep me out too, bro. It's used in the middle of the yard. When I went from the window to the door, but when I got to the door and opened it, he was there. But hang on, I forgot one thing. When they sensed my hesitation, when I was looking at him, I was like, well, I mean, he's probably just says his old lady. I wouldn't trip on it. Like, Splinter, like, don't hesitate. He's a PC. He ain't shit. Don't you guys just smash on GPs? It's based on it anyway. And I was like, well, sometimes, not always, he could have got politicked out. You know what I mean? He could have had, like, a kite dropped on him. He could have just, like, yeah, we don't even know, the, like, the whole story and shit. Like, let's ask him. Hey, friend, what is the story? Now, it's kind of on that last part. But, bro, homie, they told me he's a PC and said smashing is based on it. I don't know. Okay, let's, let's do this. So, I went from the window to the door. And when I went to the door, he was in the middle of the yard. When I opened the door, he was right there. Dude, like, he was on gliders. Like, zzz, zzz. how fast he went from the freaking thing to the, the thing. And when I opened the door, he acted like he's going to come in. And what I did, I regretted afterwards. And I made this mistake several times because I pushed him. Because he was too close to me. But in the hand-to-hand -hand combat situation, you never want to push somebody, do you? Hell no. Or, or you never want to throw one punch. I've done that too. I've been in a situation with someone and just throw one punch. And it either hits them or misses. And they come out throwing combos and I'm getting overpowered. I push this dude and he just came right back at me. I Remember I told you that story about my homeboy Todd Mast? When I pushed him and then I got freaking knocked out by the dude. That's a different story. I said, pushing is not good. Push this fool. Then he came out throwing some punches at me, dude. But they didn't, I didn't trip over my own feet this time. I, I pushed forward. I gained some ground. We're back in the front yard. Him and I are just chucking it. I know I got some good solid shots in. He hit me a couple good times. Then he just stopped. Stopped in the middle of the fight. Grabbed his little bag and just took off. 
running quickly too. When he did that, I was like, whoa, I felt like 10 foot tall. I felt like I won. I was like, dude, I must have caught him with a stinger, homeboy. Like he literally like ran away from me. He didn't want no more dog. He had some Joe and he has some Mo. And once you get Joe, you don't want no Mo. Like, dude, he broke call me. And, she, boom. and so I was like, oh. I was like, yeah. And then the homegirls of mine were like, man, you know, thank you, Splinter. I'm gonna appreciate that. You know, he, you know, thanks for taking him the team. I was like, no, not thank you, Splinter. Appreciate that too for the team. No, good looking out, Splinter, for beating that fool's ass. Thank you, Splinter. You handled that. I said, like, why, 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 why such a long face? I was like, no, thank you, thank you, man. You know, I said, like, I won, right? I smashed him. I won. They're like, you fought good. Some of those punches hit him up really solid. I was like, no, I won. Did I win? Like, no, like, he beat your ass. But I mean, he was fighting for love. And you know, Splinter, that if, if it had been you over here looking for your girlfriend, I know you won the fight. I know how you get it on on girls. Hey, don't go there. But, dude, he was fighting for love, homie. That's all it was. He has a name on girl, on girls tell me they be my, you guys could have lied to me. All of a sudden, be truthful and shit. Okay, let's trip on this. E-Pod. Kern County Jail. E-6 is the hole. And it is a nothing coming hole. Nothing, nothing coming. Well, most holes are nothing coming by default. But all of them have books. And the cops realize that you're in the hole. So they give you some amenities. You do get some yard and showers and books. And a whole program. E6, no whole program. No no TV, no books, no magazines. There's nothing coming. No yard. Nothing. They throw you in They throw you in the cell and just throw you away. And throw away the key. It's the worst time ever done right there in E6. Nothing coming. But now look, the homeboy Rambo was in E6. I also told you guys before that my county jail doesn't separate brand members, MA members, Nazi writers, P9, the high power gang members. They throw them all in there with everybody. I think my county jail looks at like the whole jail is a gang module, mix them all up together. They don't separate the gang members. They don't have like a gang module, a little set of cells up here where all the high powers go. No, nope. put them right there in everybody, except Rambo. Rambo, <clears throat> pardon me, Rambo is a highly active, highly aggressive Nazi rider with a lot of juice, a lot of yank, homeboy, and he is, he's with the dog. So I guess Kern County Jail felt, look, let's put this dude in the hole though. We usually just mix them all up. No, no, let's go ahead and take Rambo and put him in E6. So since they had him in that hole, and it was a nothing coming hole, they thought they'd give him a little something coming. Because he wasn't there for being in trouble. He was there just because they wanted to just have him very, very secure. So, like, let's let him out and have some day room. They let him clean. They'd give him day room. No one gets day room there. That's probably why they forgot about him. They straight forgot that he was out there. And another thing I forgot to tell you about E-Pod. E6 is the hole. But guess what? E1 through 5, PC. E-Pod, PC. E1 through 5, PC. E6, hole. Now, they left Rambo out there. He had day room. He's out there programming. And all of a sudden, he hears... Ink, ink. They're bringing lunches. They're bringing lunches, bro. Now, how it is, is on the top tier, you got doors. And the bottom tier, you got doors. When the cops come through, do count. They go through the bottom. Ink, ink, ink. Then they go on top. Ink, ink. When they do the feeding, same thing. Bottom and then top. So they're coming through the bottom, bro. They're coming through the physic and bottom. They got all those trays. They got the lunches. Rambo hears them. He's in a position. But he don't care. But he has to attack him, bro. But he can't, like, flag the terror cop. Like, hey, you guys actually left me out. You know, put me away in my cell. Or maybe just go stand by his cell door. Like, no, he has to get his peace, dog. And, and get that ass. It's like anybody who accidentally got left out in that position. When the cops come through, you got to handle it, bro. But Rambo loves this shit, dog. He's probably very, very happy they left him out there. And he got to do something like this. So he grabbed his piece. Now the mistake I heard he made was he was too quick. When the door opened eh, and they started to come through, he should have waited a, a little bit longer. Let them come in and just, but I heard the doors was barely open and he, he and so people that are watching couldn't see much because he pushed it into the other pod. Instead of letting them come in, he, so he rushed it, homeboy, he rushed it. Now we know that he cut the dudes that are serving the, Sack lunches, one cop and one inmate, one PC inmate. We know Rambo sliced the dude's face because he was serving meals later and people seeing him with stitches and a slice on his face. But no one really knew what happened to Rambo because they took him away. No one saw him until court. They took him to court for that. Cut the dude's face, assault. And when they took Rambo to court, he was beat up, bro. 
He was beat up, dog. He had knots on his head. The Boy Scouts couldn't untie. He had bruises, knots, and lumps for days. Out of line. People were trying to talk to him. Rambo, what happened, oh boy? I think his jaw might have been wired shut. He wasn't even able to communicate. They had him in front of the cages. And we're like, damn, dude, the cops probably beat that ass. I'm sure they did, dude. Kern County Jail, bro, they'll beat that ass. On the streets, BPD, they'll beat that ass, dog. They don't play here in Kern County. I got bit by the dog, didn't I? And I didn't have that coming. They love that shit. So, homeboy, Rambo's all beat up. Then a rumor starts going around that no, the cops didn't beat him up. The dude who beat him up, the dude who got sliced. Because he told the cops, hey, I want to fight Rambo. I want my run back. That dude came out and sliced me. I want you to get him out, put him on the yard, put us on the yard together, and let me get my run back. So the cops arranged it, put Rambo out there, put the dude out there, and the dude just fucked Rambo up. They say, propaganda, dude. I'm not buying that and buy it. Then I ain't buying it now. That was going around. The cops put that inf information out there. Yeah, you know what happened to your boy? You know how he got beat up? The, you know, the PC, the dude over there, he's a he's actually a Green Beret, Navy SEAL, Army Ranger, some badass, tough MMA fighter. He fucked with the wrong dude. So he said that the inmate did that, but I had an abscess, homeboy. I had an abscess. A couple months later, I had to go to the hospital. A cop came and got me. They took me to the hospital like a midnight. And I'm there all night, you know, there's the hospitals in the waiting room, waiting for the kind of Lancey abscess. And me and the cop were talking. He said, hey, you know what happened, Rambo? They handcuffed him up like he was going to court. Put him out on the yard all handcuffed up. And then put the dude he sliced out on the yard with some mobs and brooms to clean the yard. And the dude's like, oh yeah? Boom! Broke him off, dog. Beat him up like he was shackled that dog with a broom and shit. Straight out of line, homeboy. But that PC road... I went, no, no, he didn't ride. That's not riding, dog. That's not foul type shit. That's an imitation riding. Fuck that dude that got Rambo. But hey, homeboy, why not unshackle Rambo and let him get some money, money, money? But hey, he beat him down. Free Rambo. That's what I got for now. More videos coming soon. I'm doing a workout video. I'm going to show you some shit that Tony cannot do, homeboy. Cut the string, let it fly. Peace.